Welcome aboard, passengers. Mega Sim here. You all right? Hopefully you're doing well. I know this is a little bit late because it came out yesterday, but we are going to do the news article because I've got a spare moment now. You've seen the Clinchfield Railroad news article for today, so we're now going into yesterday's Steam article. So we know that the previous one was about the development of Steam in Train World 2 with Paul Jackson and what they wanted to achieve. Today, or yesterday, Senior producer Matt Peddleston, speaking to him, finding out some of the development approaches and challenges that come with bringing Steam to life. So they're going to get technical, but it should give us some extra insight into the thought process involved in reproducing an immersive, authentic Steam experience. So what was the biggest thing they had to figure out? Well, Simigraph is built up in multiple physics domains. Mechanic power, for example, or pneumatics or electrical. So they have new domains like water, steam pressure, new simigraph components to create, building a firebox, a boiler, steam chest, cylinders, other systems that aren't present in the modeling for diesel or electric locos. So the steam domain is then the connections between those components which makes steam work the way it should. The work going on at present is involved in creating those components and the connections between them, along with the underlying physics and maths library to support it. So they've built up, with this built up, they have the basic makeup of a steam engine. All steam engines have pretty much the same principles. So is it literally just the simulation of the motive effort and how it's generated? Well, in a sense of how they make the train go, yes. How, how we make it stop is less of an issue as those braking systems, well, they've already been designed, haven't they, within uh, Train Sim World. So they reference Simigraph quite a bit in its simplest terms, what is it? So Simigraph is the stop and go physics. Two primary physics systems in the game, gravity and collision. They're managed by a system called bullet. Oh yeah, I'd love to see the Japanese bullet on this, on trains in world, yeah. So, which is used throughout the game's industry. What bullet doesn't handle is how one thing pushes or pulls another physics controlled item. So historically in train simulation, you'll probably have had a built of, you would probably have a built a fire, a black box, sorry, black box model where everything is self-contained and configured independently diesel engine would be a black box which leads to engines being created in a generic fashion handled by configuration variables so it's a less efficient way to work it's prone to misconfiguration doesn't account for the nuances of different engines simigraph enables the creation of individual systems down to a component level that can be recombined for different vehicles then the appropriate diesel engine or electric motor as a separate component and the interactions between those components create something that feels and behaves in a more authentic way. So almost like a mechanical or electrical engine engineering kit. Well, yeah, basically the same is true then of other systems, pneumatic brakes, for example, all those linked together into one big system. So they power the axles just as they are in reality. So a class 31 has an A1A, A1A setup where alternating axles are powered. And that's exactly what they do. They get as close to replicating how the real thing works as possible. So how many modules typically are typically involved in a loco? So it's it's in the tens, but it depends on the complexity of the loco. So a class 101 is pretty simplistic, whereas a modern EMU is doing a lot of the work so for you to include more. So a lot depends on how the train is modeled. How the train is modeling the power and other systems. So the class 43 HST had an issue with the application of power after going through the preserve collection process. So what happened? Well, that was actually related to the way that the train heating is modeled. The heating system was drawing more power than it should have done, which affected the power available for the motors. Much as in the real world, they need to rewire the system to ensure the power distribution was correct. This often, this, uh, this is often much or less software development. So far closer to the real world internet instead of far closer to the real world engineering. So it's fascinating to troubleshoot. Non-software developers have taken to this system like a duck to water as these systems behave in a believable way. So we've got pictures of stuff so you can see what's going on. Early steam plow flow for Simugraph design. So the task of modeling steam operation within Simugraph is ongoing. So what other considerations are there? Well, the next challenge are the particle effects associated with steam. So they have a small amount of exhaust smoke that come from diesels, but of course, steam engines need many more and varied effects. Every one of them have a performance impact. 
So maintaining performance whilst creating a convincing display of a steam engine is such a major project. So not just considering just one such particle emitter, each locomotive will have several in operation at any given moment. And there they want to be able to run as many as is realistic on multiple trains, each of which are tied into the cause and effect of steam power. So are the existing smoke effects we have as simple as effect on, effect off? No, it's dynamic. So the amount of exhaust smoke this you're seeing is tied to the amount of load the engine is under. Although the task is straightforward at present, so once they've resolved any potential performance concerns for steam diesels, so for steam, diesels will also benefit. So they're able to employ the same processes that represent clag effects, for example. So that gives us a good idea of engineering challenges presented. What else is being considered? Well, the user experience is critical because steam is complicated. When you board a cab, all you, have, all you have is a sea of valves, not just a throttle lever that you may see in our modern trains. So you have to work out where the difficulties are going to be for players interacting with these controls. If you consider how handbrakes are currently used in the game, where rather than spinning the wheel manually, you set its position and the game just does the rotation for you. Nothing is lost from the experience of function of the control, but they've simplified its operation to improve player experience. So they have to experiment with different means of interacting with controls to find a way that combines an enjoyable experience with the right level of gameplay challenge. And different steam cabs present different challenges, so a lot of trial, experiment and revision is, is required. They also have to think about how to teach people how to operate steam. It's not easy to learn, but it's enormously satisfying to get it right. So we want to make sure that they're helping players to get the most out of it. And it's likely to be the most engaging and fun experience that they've wanted to make sure as many people as possible can get that fun. So let's say there are a dozen different valves in the steam cab. Are we look into model the cause and effect of every one. Well, they've evaluated this from a gameplay balance experience. So they'll take the same view as they do with other trains. Where is the reward though for the player? Well, they'll model as many as feels right to create an experience that delivers. The driver controls aren't massively different to those in the modern loco, but the fireman has far more going on where you place the coal in the firebox as a direct impact on the performance of the boiler. They don't know yet how, um, what the right level intricacy is, intricacy is uh, delivers on an authentic, satisfying and playable experience. Is there not an argument to be made for a beginner versus expert mode? Well, there is a case to be made for two players' tiers of play. For example, opening the taps to the correct order rather than any order. It comes down to whether players will prefer an accessible style of play where they just want to ex enjoy the experience and it just make it go sense. Or advanced controls that are understandable and usable by far fewer players. So they want both options available. So they have quite a few Dovetail Games team members who work on Heritage Rail. How many of them will have direct experience on Steam? Well, they've got a lot of people involved in Heritage Rail, both from a fireman and driver perspective, and a network of people outside the company who can help them get the experience right. But there's a lot they do know, and they're taking their time to ensure that they get it right. And that takes experimentation. So they've modified a steam loco from train simulator brought into train sim world to act like a diesel. Why? Well, they don't have the steam physics. So that's something that they're solving. But in parallel, they can start to work on the user interface and experience, building an understanding of what they need to teach players. And they can learn a lot with this fake train whilst we develop steam systems at the same time. I would love to know what steam engine it is. So they've seen photos of steam train blasting along the line at 60 miles per hour so they know what it looks like so they can work on that particle effects needed to convey that visual sense of power now while other systems are still in development so steam trains they have more moving parts than locos that they already haven't developed that they already developed each of those have their own audio signature so are they going to present this represent this well, it's the case of listening to each part of the audio, working out which parts generate which sounds. They don't just listen to the sum of the sound of the loco. They're working to understand where those sounds originate, what triggers the squeaks, how it fits with the overall audio landscape. They can't record these individually. So it's a case of recording authentic sound where possible, recreating where necessary, and then delivering the right balance overall during mixing. So with the model in the game, they can work on 
making this come to life. So we know from talking to players that not everyone is passionate about Steam. So why would a non-enthusiast be interested in what they're making? Well, the main appeal is there is much more to do. Visually, there's a lot going on. The driver, the fireman are a partnership working to keep the train running. And there's always something that needs attention. An incline may be approaching that requires action in a steam loco, whilst a model electric wouldn't need any adjustment. It's just a case of suddenly needing to find and learn 15 controls to make progress. You're using the controls you're familiar with differently. So you don't simply put the reverser into forward. You now have to operate it in concert with the regulator to get the application of power you're after. And it's techniques you'll be learning, not fundamentals. And this learning curve is very enjoyable. It's approachable to get started, but the experience is deep and more proficient that you become, the, the greater that satisfaction. So, reference firemen, they've referenced it a few times. Train simulator, they've offered auto firemen. Is that something you're doing here? Well, the fireman has a lot to look after and their role is different to that of the driver. They want to create a unique experience for both roles. So that means an automatic fireman option and an automated driver. They also know that um, some players will want to manage both. Well, these aren't simple systems to create. Two roles need to be smart enough to handle their role effectively. So, in the next theme article, we'll be talking about the world about the world these trains run in, the track, the signalling, and how they go about replicating a role a world that no longer exists. So, thoughts that I have, fireman, that would be quite cool. Get being able to be a fireman on this. Automatic, eh, you could have an automatic one or maybe the ability, you know, like Microsoft Train Simulator, you were able to put more coal in or less coal in or do, yeah, that's what I'm thinking potentially. But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing this. Um, replicating a world that no longer exists, I'm interested in what they've said there um, because it means that we're not really going Heritage Railway, but actual real life railways, um, but just old fashioned. So I'm liking the sound of that, that we will get some real-life railways. Hopefully it's going to start off with British Railway. I guess in, in the end we're going to get American and other countries. Uh, but first of all, you've got to have a British line. Uh, maybe uh, Flying Scotsman or something. But yeah, that would be really good. I am looking forward to it. There's a lot of stuff in that news article. So if you want to read back, um, news article link is in the description below uh, to have a look at that. But yeah, really looking forward to Steam. Not sure when it's going to come. Will it come in August when there's like an update of some sort? Not sure. It's going to take a lot of work because it's not as simple as a diesel or an electric engine. There's loads of different parts. Steam coming out all sorts of places. It's not a simple thing. It's a lot more complicated. But they are working on it. They are working on it. Because don't forget, they've also got the limitations of what the game can be provided on console and PC. Think of the Erosa line. I know we keep going back to that. But what they did was they used their the 100% of, you know, you get 100% of the game and you work out where you want these things to go. Trees, there were less trees, they used less resources on it in terms of the game. And that's kind of the same with this. How much of the game are you going to rely on doing the Steam and those parts to then make sure that the rest of the game looks okay? Because you may put 50% into the engine and it's like, well, what's everything else going to do? So yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. There's a lot of thing working to do and optimization as well to ensure that it goes into the game, but at the same time, it's not too big. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos from Le Megasim. Social media links are in the description below. We will see you on the next video. This is Megasim out of here. See you later, guys. Bye.